put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Mother, movie review. So as usual, I just finished watching. Well, at this point, it's been a little, you know, the walk home, and I just finished you know, setting, up, setting up the camera, getting, you know, just watched the midnight screenings episode on it, which I recommend, although do note that it spoils. I, you can probably tell I'm a little discombobulated, but yeah, I, you know, it's, it's going to take a while for the movie to really settle. But I do know what the content of my nightmares for the next few weeks is going to be. And there's a certain piece to, to that. But yeah, I record these as soon as I can after, you know, finishing watching or completing the game or whatever, so... Here we go. Wow, I almost forgot to note. Plot. The I'm not gonna give very much away, but yeah, a a married couple, you know, Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem, the the yeah, they live in this very isolated house out in you know close close to a forest but it's in a field and you know she's been renovating the place he is a poet but he has writer's block and a husband and wife just invite themselves in and they're both big fans of the poet and he enjoys their company but Jennifer Lawrence I'm I'm gonna be using the the actors names because the the Javier Bardem's character name is him and if I try to say him every time it's gonna get confusing when I refer to other male characters as him so yeah and it doesn't bother me that the the, the character names are designations like that I suppose that's about what I should give away from. But yeah, Jennifer Lawrence doesn't really want them there, and there's a lot of like little microaggressions. Micro, it's just everybody ignores what she wants, including him. And and it's very clear, it's clear right from the very start. The their relationship is not ideal. There are definitely problems. There are things that go unsaid. You know, one one of the first things is actually he. You know, she's trying to kind of be be intimate with him, and he keeps just dodging it. And yeah. But anyway, I watched Mother! Exclamation point. So was it good? Question mark. Well, ellipses. It was semicolon, but it was not what I expected. Period. I am seeing a lot of requests to please never do that. I will stop for now. I make no promises for the long run. Actually, I promise I will do it again. Really, if you're surprised I opened, you know, I, I did this, you must be new to my channel. The, the, I don't think anybody's going to go into this expecting, you know, actually expecting what it turns out to be. And yeah, as others have pointed out, the, the less you know, the better, the, the more, of an effect it's gonna have, and you know, for the for the first chunk of it, it feels you you you're gonna think that you more or less see what's coming, although it's maybe gonna do some things that you don't see coming. But then, like the second hour or the last forty minutes, I I don't check my clock while watching excuse me movies movies in the theater. It goes insane, and I am I mean that people who say the, the the movie goes insane in the second half. They're not exaggerating. It, yeah, it just it. The 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 last chunk of the movie 
is on drugs. There's there's just no is I I I really enjoyed it even though I definitely do have some I I do have some problems with mother, you might say I have mother issues. But I I recommend it and you know people who say they don't recommend it they're not really wrong. The people who say that there's nothing to gain from the movie they're wrong. But you know like like every mother mother has unrealistic expectations forced upon it is abused by people who haven't been in her place makes mistakes th though well intentioned and you don't know how good a job it's done right away. I mean, that's a given, and the immediate reaction is just trying to cope with all the blood and the sudden violent transformation, and I'm out of metaphors. Some people say this is a black comedy, not a horror movie, which, you know, sometimes Aronofsky's humor is just spot on. I really love the, they are in good hands, the many-armed angel in Noah saying, but, yeah, sometimes, not so good. I really disagree. I don't think this is a, a comedy movie at all. It's... <laughs> the early parts, I don't even know if... I don't... I guess you could call them drama. I d Maybe thriller, like like psychological thriller, because of the way they constantly undermine Jennifer Lawrence's wishes. You know, the, these people invite themselves into her home that she spent forever you know, renovating, and they, and they're like one of the first things Michelle Pfeiffer's character, and I love her, and she's amazing. So said Harris, so is Harvey Reddy. You know, every major character in this is beautifully acted. But but yeah, I mean, I haven't seen Michelle Pfeiffer this great in in a while. But I haven't watched all of her most recent movies. But you know, if you've watched her best work, you know she's amazing. But but just. One of the first things she says is she like indicates the spots. Oh, I guess you didn't get to that part yet. Like, it's it's you know Jennifer Lawrence spends forever doing this, and just the the you know I I forget she might have also said the the place looks beautiful or something, but you don't say that's a spot you you know missed the spot that's yeah. To, to to move on, I probably won't get into much symbolism because I'm kind of illiterate when it comes to that, but I will say, and this is also a movie, you need to let this movie kind of land, which is, again, I, I realize the irony. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video if there's stuff that I get later. I have not read the Bible. It's simply the... the if you don't believe... It's a hard book to get through. It's, it's difficult to just sit down and read. I do know a number of the stories, but I was not raised to believe. In fact, I was specifically raised not to, which I still, you know, my parents made the choice that they felt was right, but I'm never having children. But if I ever did, I, I don't think you should raise a child not to believe. I think you should raise a child to make up their own mind and just, you know, tell them what you think is right to tell, you know, if you want to raise your child to believe, that's fine, but yeah, you know, in my opinion, the best approach is to tell them what you think is right. You know, don't necessarily some of the bloody stories of the Bible, for example, but if you want to tell them, you know, I, I wasn't raised not to know about Christianity. I was just raised not to believe in it, but, you know, I, I knew about the, you know, Garden of Eden kind of stuff as a kid. Now, I only, you know, most of what I do learn, know about Christianity, I started learning in 2010 when I started doing videos about religion. Now, this movie is really divisive. I haven't calculated percentages, but a bunch of people are saying it's amazing, and a bunch are calling it awful. Not many in the middle, and yeah, I'm, I'm calling it amazing, but I there's definitely pacing issues. 
and and you could you know this is one of those movies where the the second half is almost just a different movie than the first one I do think that I, I really appreciate that Aronofsky and I think this is something he does tend to do because he really loves to just push and push and push he's pretty good at not pushing too hard for too long and this is, I mean a movie like Black Swan starts pushing right away but it doesn't keep pushing at the same intensity throughout the runtime. That would be intolerable. You know, he is not, you know, Paul W. S. Anderson or, you know, Michael Bay. And so, yeah, just so the he, yeah, he knows not to push too hard, and that's evidenced here yet again. And yeah, I I think the I, I I I have to admire his restraint because this movie he clearly had a ton to say and the fact that he managed to 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 concentrate so much of it in the second half whilst the first doesn't push that hard. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, there's enough material for like a mini series, possibly even like one full American season of a regular TV show, and he manages to put it all in this hour or so. Yeah, and the program is ready with my notes again, so I can go back to some of my prepared remarks, which is good because I was. Out of stuff to say about that. Yeah, it's not an accessible movie. <laughs> Aronofsky either didn't learn or forgot the lesson from The Fountain. Personally, I'm all for artsy movies. Make what you're passionate about. But if you release it to the public, you have to expect people to respond to it based on whether or not they liked it. Is he becoming Todd Salons, you know, making movies for a small crowd repeatedly? I love what I've watched by Salons. Welcome to the Dollhouse, Happiness, Storytelling. And I own both Welcome to the Dollhouse and Storytelling. And also watched Palindromes and Life During Wartime. It, I really wish he hadn't recast Mark, but anyway. Yeah, the... And, yeah, starting about one and a half or two weeks ago, I rewatched as research Rosemary's Baby and every Aronofsky film except for The Wrestler since I rewatched it for Logan. That was mere half a year ago, so I have watched each of his films and Rosemary's Baby at least twice and with one viewing being very recently. I also rewatched Silver Linings Playbook for a refresher on J. Law's acting. Rewatched The Relevant Arc of Charmed. I forgot how much fun that show is. I might have to rewatch the whole thing again. And moving away from the movie and into, you know, this is where I do the political and other stuff. Crack just pointed out in a video on movie timelines that John Doe arrives at the police station after the most awkward cab drive ever. Travis Bigel has seen worse days than that. And in the Homer Palooza flashback that one character calls his car the second base mobile, Bickle's cab would be the third base mobile. Go Congress go, Trump tweets. Does, does he think he's in a Saturday morning cartoon? Go go gadget Congress. It's morphin' time. And now Congress is doing a bill about Trump denouncing hate groups. He denounced the violence on many sides, because apparently we're dealing with an icosagon. That girl who swore at the InfoWars moron reminds me of the girl who swore at Jim Carrey and me, myself, and Irene. I realize I'm about, you know, I sh if I was going to talk about that, I should have done it a week ago, but, you yeah. know. And now the NRA are in favor of making silencers easy to buy because they don't want to protect cops and they don't want to only sell to people worried about protecting themselves. People who want to buy guns are often just children and adult bodies who want cool toys. A Republican once told me personally that they thought de Democrats deep down thought guns were cool but wouldn't admit it, thus admitting that they themselves thought they were cool and that was more important to them than the countless people shot who shouldn't have been. And this person, person later admitted that they had literally fetishized guns. And yes, I am using literally in the correct way. This is the part where I would usually go over notes taken during watching, and there were a lot. I, I don't know how many pages are in the, the 
notepad, maybe a hundred. There's like two pages left that I didn't write anything on. So yeah, I am not going to give away anything that, so yeah, I, I'll go through all of them in the thoughts portion. On plot. Excuse me. Now, the restaurant Noah, excuse me, Candy, R and Push PG-13 rating, and this, like the rest of his films, is an R, and it would have been impossible to make this movie and not make it an R, so I'm really glad that he didn't compromise his vision. Now, with Aronofsky's films, you never know quite what to expect, and Aronofsky isn't really subtle. There are subtle details, but overall, he comes on very strong direct in his films, which is why I was really surprised to see that, you know, right from the trailer, you can see that this is very similar to, and not the very first trailer, but the, you know, not the, not the teaser, but the first regular trailer, you can tell, you know, Rosemary's Baby, and Rosemary's Baby is very subtle. There's, there's a lot of subtlety to that movie, which, you know, considering it's literally about Satanism at a time, you know, 68, I think that was during the, satan, the Satanic Panic, which made people manic. But, yeah, you know, Aronofsky's covered every major fictional film genre, except historical and biography. IMDb doesn't define The Fountain or Noah as part fantasy or Black Swan as at least part horror. I completely disagree with them on that. You know, and, and before you could... I'm not saying that, like, the Bible is fantasy, but Noah the movie does have... You know, I'm not saying all of the Bible at least is fantasy, but Noah does legit have angels, magic, and yeah, it's, it's part fantasy. Now, psychological thriller used to define his oeuvre, but, you know, with this is only his second psychological horror, and I would say it fares well, but again, it's not... Yeah, Brad Jones said that in Midnight Screens. If you expected a straightforward horror movie, you don't know Aronofsky. Now, Aronofsky makes stylish atmosphere, sometimes surreal. This is one that's very surreal. Interestingly, filmed movies starring someone who has or gets some major emotional and or physical problems and their tremendous struggle to deny or address them. And, yeah, that's very much the case. And in this one, the movie more hints than really outright says what their problems are, but the problems in the marriage, there are clearly the problems in the marriage, and again, some of them, I already mentioned that, you know, some of them you can tell from right away, you can tell from, like, these hints and such, I'm talking very fast, I hope that doesn't bother you, because I'm not sure it's going to stop, yeah, you know, the movie is surreal, Aronofsky does need more rubber spiders, you know, just press the cork board so the entire manatee is behind the preacher, now, the, you know, yeah, in, in the violence, this is indeed one of the countless pieces of film fiction in more recent, like, Hitchcock made more realistic. Anyway, where the human body is easy to cut or break, where every sharp object is razor sharp, yet with the endurance of a hammer. You know, Hitchcock, one of his movies, they, you know, they literally talk about he wanted to show how difficult it is to kill a person, how much a person struggles as they're being killed, and how difficult it is for the person killing, and yeah, that's just gone out the window. I'm not entirely certain when, but yeah, I, I'm sorry, I missed that. I really, I, I think there's a lot to showing how difficult it is, because some of the movies are just extre are you know, just are extremely gory in part to show the the horror of the you know you can do that with you know all the crime on the western front has something amazing like that now as others have pointed out Aronofsky really tortures the characters in this especially Lawrence I will say I shouldn't say that before the spoiler section and Aronofsky gives us really strong images, sometimes they're rich, richly beautiful, as a lot of nature in Noah, sometimes they're one or more following, disgusting, nasty, violent, disturbing, grotesque, gruesome, brutal, 
the poking of the brain in Pi, the fridge in Arm, in Requiem for a Dream, drinking sap in the fountain, the blade in the wrestler, picking at the finger in Black Swan, brief but detailed vision of the sense of man that Noah gets when he returns from the ark before the flood. Did I mention I'm into rap music? He hasn't made a single film wherein there isn't some kind of breaking of the skin or even flesh, gore, blood, and no, this one does not break that trend. And yes, this actually has some of the most horrifying imagery that he's... You know what? This has the most horrifying images that he's put to film. And that really does say a lot. And just so you don't think I'm too easily impressed when it comes to disturbing visuals, among my favorite movies of all time are The Thing, Videodrome, Scanners, Other Carpenter, and Cronenberg. As much as I've gotten my hands on American Psycho, A Clockwork Orange, and I've watched them countless times since my teen years. Not saying I'm some badass, but I can handle quite a bit of gore and the like. Now, outside of The Fountain and The Wrestler, there's this, you know, unusually frequent in the same film, Aronofsky will blur the line between reality and things that the protagonist imagines. You know, the film was told through the perspective of the protagonist, and entire swaths of the story could be entirely imagined. And in this one, I mean, actually, I guess most of it's supposed to kind of really happen, because this movie is not set in the real world, and it really never pretends to be. The, the if you don't understand by the ending of the very opening sequence that this movie is not set in the real world I I don't think anyone anything will convince you now I love Pi, Requiem for a Dream, The Wrestler and Black Swan. I admit Noah has problems even though I love it. Honestly I think it's my favorite of his movies and once again I'm not a believer I am in Gamora's words faithless. Of course, I do love me some LGR and never-ending stories, so that helps. If I weren't watch it, I wouldn't have guessed Aronofsky could direct amazing action like that, especially concerning Fountain. In this recent rewatching of his body of work, it was easily the one that captivated me the most. I love so much the bit where Noah recounts Genesis, the visuals, just amazing. And, and again, this, you know, I've owned Requiem for a Dream almost as long as that movie has even been on DVD and watched it a ton of times especially back you know right after I got it so, you know like with American Psycho and, and such just absolutely love and and Videodrome and The Thing now yeah to get back to it, Black Swan the wrestler tied for a close second, Rick for a Dream the third and yeah, to get back to, like, problems with them, you know, the fountain comes off as pretentious. Honestly, I don't really like that one. It's the only of his I don't like. He just jumps too much around, thinks too highly of what he's conveying. You never get into these characters because it's always jumping around. But I maintain he hasn't made a bad movie, and he most definitely is always interesting. He always keeps your attention throughout. And again, in this one, I, I don't want to go so far as to say that your mind will drift, but... The movie does have like these in in the midnight screens. They also they bring up Polanski. Polanski can do these scenes where not a ton happens without like it feeling like wow, this is really taking forever. D yeah, he he masters that. This is the first major release at least it's it's possible he's done like student films or some student films where he also emulates Polanski but Polanski's style is very hard to emulate properly and I think this is a very good first attempt at that and I would love for him to continue although I will say I don't I don't think it would be the worst thing ever if he maybe like just did a little practice without really you know I, I don't think we need to see every step of the way on but you know there are other movies where he makes decisions that a lot of people would characterize as maybe not being the the most yeah yeah to get back to the you know Aronofsky's films always speak to me occasionally in a language I don't understand but speak they do and I do understand people who hate the film and you know, I, I would say within two or three of Aronofsky's movies, you probably know if you do, you know, 
hate his movies, and if you continue to watch, you really must expect to not to like what you see. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to, you know, I've watched countless movies where I expected not to like it, and yeah, but, you know, I, I understand why some might call him gimmicky, pretentious, too in love with his own ideas, p overly pessimistic, manipulative, especially in overusing certain editing tricks, you know, overly, the, the, the artsy aspects of his movies don't gel with the rest of, you know, the, the, there are some art movies where from start to finish, okay, this is arty, and I mean, in a lot of Aronofsky's movies, you could edit out the artsy stuff, and the movie would still, like, if, if in Requiem for a Dream, if the editing, you know, the, the very abridged script calls it, I, th I think it's very abridged, it's the abridged script, calls it, like, editing gimmicks, I'm not sure I would go that far, but, yeah, you know, if you chose to edit it in a less arty way, in a more typical mainstream way, the movie would still work. You know, this is not the kind of movie where once you start, you know, he doesn't really make movies where, well, The Fountain would be the one, you know, if, if you start messing around with, you know, making it more accessible, it's not necessarily, you know, like, it's a Suicide Squad. If you didn't use the, the trailer, you know, trailer park stuff with introductions with, like, funny little text and colors and, like, if you removed that, the movie would flow more naturally because there's so little of it that it feels really, it, it sticks out. And, yeah, if you remove that, you know, it, very, it would very easily where, like, you know, yeah, there, there are other movies where once you start changing a lot of stuff, it completely... Yeah. Now, a theme in Aronofsky's work is losing one's mind partially or fully, especially due to a strong drive also leading to self-destruction. Possession with patterns and pie, hunger and drug abuse for different characters in Requiem for a Dream, sexuality and stress in Black Swan, the future of Earth in Noah. It's not, you know, the... the One second... And, you know, the, the... I don't know why I wrote that. I must have... Anyway, yeah, you know, uh, The Fountain, it's this drive to, you know, conquer death. The Wrestler, it's, you know, not giving, giving up his image as still a wrestler. And in this... I suppose there, yeah, to, to some extent it's there, but it's more kind of this Polanski, this very Rosemary's Baby, very meek female, you know, stepped on by everyone, including her husband kind of thing, you know, more so than her actively doing things that are destroying her like these other characters. And I'm I'm not judging any of the the characters. I think everybody has strong drives. You know, not everyone's will turn self-destructive, and you know, but yeah. I forget if I said in my Requiem for a Dream videos, but I I think the you know yeah the movie's manipulative. I don't think it's saying drugs lead to pain and suffering. I, I'd i say it's more about the American dream. The, the characters are perfectly content before they get this idea in their heads that they have to be much more than they are. You know, Sarah has to be skinny and oh, thin, thin and attractive, and the, the three of them have to be rich and like really run thing. They're even, they're not that unhappy when they're no longer rich. They just feel the itch to, oh, we could be rich again. But they're not, like, miserable just from that. It's because they don't accept, okay, you know, money comes and money goes. It's, you know, yeah. Now, Aronofsky has written every of his movies except Black Swan, The Wrestler. This is one of the only, 
This is the only of the movies where he is the only credited writer. You know, not even his common co-writer, whose name I didn't write down and I can't currently recall. Ari Handel, I want to say, not to be confused with Alejandro Amenabar, who I've also been rewatching. Amazing. In Pi Requiem for Dream Black Swan, something bad happens while riding the subway. Does Aronofsky just hate the subway? Not in this. The movie is, you know, yeah, it's it's set in the house, and that's really not a spoiler. Now, let's see. Lots of wiki quotes. Now, Aronofsky wrote the. After 2014's Noah, Aronofsky began working on a children's movie, although he stated that he couldn't quite break it. Aronofsky making a children's movie. Now that is like, you know, reading that, it's like, wait, am, am I in one of Aronofsky's movies? Because that's that's a hallucination. There's no way that's, that's, I can't even... Uh, you know, however, during that process, he came up with a new idea. He ended up writing the mother screenplay in five days, much faster than his usual pace. And, you know, that might be a very bad sign or a very good one. I... It's not... They didn't use the script. He, he refined it after. I'm almost certain. I do think that it there, there are things that could have been made even slightly better. But, anyway... The film uses a dream logic narrative, very Lynchian of him, which Aronofsky has noted, if you try to unscrew it, it kind of falls apart. He defended this by further explaining that it's a psychological freakout, you shouldn't over-explain it, and I would have to agree. And... Yeah, you know, that really sounds like Aronofsky in his element. On his regular for dream commentaries, right, he talks about being fascinated with being able to smoothly transition from seeing a character walking on the street to into their thoughts. I love that they're idiots saying this movie sucks because it's unrealistic, crazy, or has no plot. No, really, the movie made it completely clear from the trailers that it was at least the first two of those three. And once you do that, it's fine. Not every movie needs to avoid one or more of those three. Now, people who say the horror is unintentionally funny, that's of course a problem. Unless they're just the wrong audience for it, and I'm not sure they necessarily were. It is a movie that... It's you know sometimes when it's so it it's it's a movie that gets very extreme at times as Aronofsky's want to do and yeah sometimes it's yeah I I get it I I could tell I think there is at least one thing in every single one of his movies so far where you could sit back and like laugh at how extreme it gets and yeah. My talking fast may or may not be that I'm not 100% certain how much time I'm going to have to sleep after recording this. It's midnight, which makes it a midnight... yeah. But yeah, you know, some say the pacing is bad in this. I'd say that makes it the only Aronofsky film except The Fountain to have bad pacing. But yeah, there are definitely some, some issues there. I... The movie could definitely have been tighter, and again, it's 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 tense. But Polanski just really grips you, and yeah, I mean, it's that's Polanski's an excuse me, an amazing talent. Now, I think, excuse me, made clear in my the rules of attraction videos. But for those who didn't watch those, I don't think it makes a movie bad. They didn't enjoy watching it. Not all pieces of creative expression are meant to leave you with a feeling that you like. It's a problem if that happens with a movie that clearly didn't mean to have that effect, and or it can be bad if it's a movie that you should expect to leave you feeling good, like a family movie or the like. Some movies only really hit you a while after watching. It would be worse if we wanted to make an impact and never did, no matter how much time passed. I'm not sure there's ever going to be a time where I like look at this movie and I'm like, that really made me happy. But that's not Aronofsky. And again, you know, even if you haven't watched any of his movies, you should know just from his reputation that's not what he does. You know, I, I guess 
I guess you could say that Noah comes somewhat close to leaving you with some good feeling, but that's still, I mean, that's after the movie took you to the very edge. I mean, spoiler alert for, you know, book that's too, you know, in the story of Noah, God floods the earth. I'm sorry if I'm the one breaking this news to you, but that's pretty horrifying, even in PG-13. Now, I'm going to give it my best shot. Johan Johansson, I guess, provided the score and music cons and was the music consultant for the film. This, you know, this is the first Aronofsky film without composer Clint Mansell's involvement, and personally, I love the score of Aronofsky's films, it's, you know, and this one as well. Now, one reviewer said the shaky camera close-ups gave me a headache. You know, I I can't think, that's, that's the first Aronofsky film where you could say something like that, but, you know, he hasn't done shaky and handheld before, but, you know, with the last several movies, he's been doing at least one new thing with each film. Personally, I don't think it was shaky. Not every shot was a close-up. There are lots of medium shots when it was appropriate for, you know, big things happening. It's also, and these are just on reactions or when, if, when just a few people are involved, and, I don't want to call it an action scene, but like a tense scene where like physical stuff happens. I don't think this, you know, yeah, this is not like one of the Bourne sequels or something, which still, you know, I love those movies. Characters. Every character has a name based on what they are, not an actual person name, not even a last name. And I like every major actor cast in this in other stuff I've seen them in. Now, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence as mother. A lot of people say Lawrence is too skinny, but, you know, she has silence. It's not super important. She didn't train herself to starve. Booyah, homie. So far, each... Aronofsky protagonist's major character has been perfectly cast, really using what that actor can do well, whether we necessarily knew that going in or not. I did not expect that, yeah, what he did with Marlon Wayans. I don't think anybody did, but... And, and Marlon... It, same year as Scary Movie. I'm almost certain same year. Or maybe Scary Movie 2 was the same year. And he had to go and follow up... Scary, the, the scary movie path of the two movies. I would have loved to see him do more dramatic work. And before watching Requiem for a Dream, I never thought I would say that about Marlon Wayans. Yeah. Now, I decided against going over all of those in this video. It's, you know, yeah. And though you may disagree with me and Aronofsky on some of the casting, it's pretty obvious what the major cast are there to do in an Aronofsky film once you've watched it. And I would say that's still the case. Now, in my experience of Jennifer Florence, which is her three X-Men movies, all three of which I've watched more than once, the four Hunger Games movies, and except for the last one more than once, and Silver Lightning's playbook twice most recently yesterday, and the second movie helped me realize that I can no longer hear Bradley Cooper's voice and not think of Rocket. Not Will Tippin, despite the fact that I've watched the entirety of Alias twice, but Rocket. I'm okay with that. I won't be doing a video on it. Everything I have to say has been said already and better than I would. Anyway, all of, all of which I like her performance in. Jennifer Lawrence is often reactive more than active, and that's true in this, and it makes sense because, yeah, again, she's playing, you know, it's it's... It's this generation's Rosemary's Baby in some ways, and you can't have Rosemary's Baby with a very active female protagonist, but yeah, she's always strong, independent, and willing to sacrifice herself for what she truly really believes in, but at other times can be or come off as very weak. Now, this is meant to insult her or her abilities. I see a lot of people talk about Lawrence's facial expressions. She does a great job using those in the Hunger Games trilogy, and I'd say she does a great job here. This is a movie that really, and yeah, a lot of people are saying she failed. If you don't, th if if she didn't do a great job, and I think she does with her facial expressions in this movie, the movie would be just unbearable to watch. And that's one of the things people say. You know, that just. 
no, there's, you know, they, they couldn't stand this because her face is so prevalent and her facial expressions have to carry so much. You know, at a point she wondered, like, might the guests, the house guests run her right out of her home? Do you think they would want her to die in the woods alone? And Javier Bardem as him, and others have noted the age difference, and it is acknowledged in the film. Javier only dates women who have little tiny fingers, though. Now, you know, and, and for, you, you know, you could watch the top ten movie couples with ridiculous age gaps from WatchMojo.com if you don't mind watching videos from WatchMojo.com. I think everything I have to say about WatchMojo.com was said in one of the most recent Going Off podcasts. Podcasts. Now, I've already talked briefly about Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer. And I at, f at first I wasn't sure. I, I looked up the wrong actor, but Stanley B. Herman is in the movie. He's in every Aronofsky film except except The Fountain and The Wrestler. Oh, and, well, the Russell Crowe one. In that one, he is nowhere to be found. You know, it's the old guy, frequently creepy, especially on the subway. Pretty big fan of ass to ass. So fittingly, he's listed as fornicator. I feel terrible about it. I'm not sure I really recognize him. I recognize Stephen McCaddy, but he's also much. He's fairly prominent once he's in the movie. Now, relationship between romantic partners, parents, and offspring. Or the like may start strong but deteriorate over the course of the film as the self-destruction goes further and further in Aronofsky movies. And that takes us. I think I have way too much to say myself to go into the critics stuff, so we are skipping that. Going into thoughts on. Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Now... There we go. Plot. Now, Rantasmo's video on Black Swan helped me realize that Aronofsky had, when Aronofsky has a man go insane, it's because of a skill and a knowledge that that man and others hold in high regard. When he has a woman go insane, there's some element of sexuality or at least physical appearance involved. I'm not saying Aronofsky's sexist. I do understand why people, based on this movie, think he's sexist. I completely disagree. I think there is a real love of Jennifer Lawrence's character in this. And of the feminine, it's it's really, but it's it's one of those things where people see a character treated really badly, and they think that that means that the the create the powers that be think that that kind of character should be abused. I I will never understand that. Okay, I get that. Like if you put a lot of effort into showing something then people are going to think that that's something you're, you know, yeah, you know, if, if you, like, couldn't possibly stand, like, yeah, if, if it was a thing that didn't in some way interest you or something, even if you hate it, then you wouldn't put it on screen, you know, but... I, I don't, it's, it's, we're clearly meant to sympathize with her, you know, so, yeah. Now, the, I suppose, some of the way, eh, this kind of, 
keeps to that. You know, you yeah. yeah, this is the spoiler section. I don't know why I'm trying to hint. The the there are a couple of things that are driving her you know, that, that are really destroying her. At first, emotionally, phys you know, later, physically. Them destroying the house, and this starts out fairly small. The Them not respecting her opinion in her own house, which, I mean, that is not a specifically feminine or female thing to do. You know, both genders want their authorita respected and the and I suppose some of the way you know the her house you could actually I guess that's not especially feminine necessarily but then you have that she doesn't feel like she was enough to satisfy him and she feels undesirable to him and now I'm gonna sound sexist Again, I don't think I don't think less of women because of feminine traits, and I do think a lot of BS is said about oh that's that's feminine about things that aren't especially feminine. But I do also think there's a lot of value to acknowledging that there are differences between the genders, and I would I would say that thinking that. I think I'm just going to dig myself a hole if I dig deeper, but I, th I think I've conveyed basically what I mean. And, you know, I was wondering if Lawrence would ever hallucinate herself watching herself like in Black Swan and Noah. And I mean, not really. I, I guess you could say that the very first thing you see, which is also the very last thing you see, which is beautiful because the first time I was like that's but that's not Jennifer Lawrence so that can't be like a memory but you don't quite know and she wakes up and it's this dreamlike state of like she's alone and he's gone and she wanders through the house and it's like is it this, this is like still a dream and you know yeah you really you know it's, it's not a memory she personally had Man, it just hit me again, the the fade of, like, once once he puts the heart and just all the renovation, and then she fades into existence. Man, that's horrifying. Just to, just to literally live only for one other person and, like, think that you're an individual. Think that, that, that you're not, that, that, that sh they clearly think that they've existed far longer than they actually have. They think that they personally renovated the house, or personally that they physically, direct like like literally by painting. That's not what happened. We understand that when we see the ending, which also helps explain why he's so upset about the the diamond. Although, I mean, he does he does himself show it to them, but it is, yeah. I, I don't remember if I wrote it down anywhere, but I love the way uh, Bardem goes between this very charming and this very sinister and creepy. You know, I haven't watched him in a lot. Only really, you know, Mar, I'm not sure, the, the sea within, which is ironic because he, you know, he is without sea outside of himself. But the the... In that he can be incredibly charming, and I've seen trailer clips where he's very sinister. Now, yeah, and to briefly go through some notes I had on Noah that I'm fairly certain I didn't say in the video. I, I did rewatch my own videos, but I, yeah, I sometimes forget what here. So. You know, in Noah Hopkins, when he isn't, you know, before he starts talking apocalypse stuff, he, at first he's just such a grandpa, you know, and then he says sleep, and the kid falls asleep, which is which every grandparent wishes they could do, and every parent, most siblings, and later Connolly is like, I want my sons to have children, but then she says, I want them to be happy. It's gonna have to be one or the other, and Lerman is like with that one young woman looking at her like, I'd like to get to know you biblically, I mean better. 
and Hopkins finally finds a berry he chews and is ready to die. Must be one heck of a berry. If your child is a girl, in the moment of her birth, I will cut her down. Stepdads, am I right? I, I still, I, I, it really dawned on me this most recent viewing. He only threatens to kill her babies. If she, how can he be sure she won't have more? Anyway, how could you? The fireworks on the knife, weren't you watching? I would have to say, of all Aronofsky's work, this is the one least connected to reality, the most allegorical. And, you know, third film in a row of Aronofsky's, where a major character has demonized at least once. And they're not even all about transformation. Notes taken during watching. Strap in. I suppose I could have said this during the... The movie is two hours, pretty much, to the minute. Maybe two minutes less than... Yeah. And, yeah, you know, start the movie and you see the fire and... You know, I was like, that's not Jennifer Lawrence's face. And there at the end, I was like, I knew it wasn't Jennifer Lawrence's face. Because, you know, we see... And we see the person waking... Because when he carries her there at the end, that is Jennifer Lawrence, clearly. And... Yeah, then there at the end, you know, wakes up and looks, and we see that's not Jennifer Lawrence, which, you know, just really solidifies, nope, that wasn't her at the start either, and this keeps happening. And the, the exclamation point stays on screen for maybe like three seconds, so, yeah, he, that was very intentional, he didn't just want... I love the renovation time lapse of the many rooms, which again, you know, at first, you know, once you hear her say, "I spent forever renovating this place," yeah, again, you you think, "Oh, that you know, we were just we were seeing that, you know, done like that," because he's done that. He does time lapse to show something that happens over a lot of time. You know, Requiem for a Dream has that really famous bit. And yeah, you you know, we don't know for sure, but yeah, I guess it's possible that the heart does take a long time, many, many months, to renovate the house like that. And yeah, then, you know, mother wakes up and thinks that she did. I, I suppose it is even possible that she did do it, and we're just only seeing the, the time-lapse part, but... You know, if, if that is the case, then she only came into existence when he removed the heart from the previous mother. And, you know, in there are times where this is literally Jennifer Lawrence wanders her house, the movie. And, you know, sometimes she really walks, like, just completely straight, like she's... You know, in a completely straight line, one direction, like she's taking a sobriety test. And, you know, you have the, the jump scare with the, you know, she, yeah, she wanders the house and she comes outside and then he's right behind her, you know. I do think that the jump scares were a little corny. And... And especially one of those, you know, but over the course of it, we do get, we do see more of his sinister side. So I suppose it's, you know, I just, I don't think it was necessary to have the orchestra sting and have her jump. Just turn the camera and then like slowly we realize he's there and she kind of gets a sense and she turns around. Oh, there you are. You know, you don't have to make a big thing out of it. You can just, you know. And, yeah, you know, she's trying to lean in to kiss him, and he pulls away. He doesn't want her intimacy. And I also notice she walks really robotically sometimes. I suppose it's possible that the him avoiding intimacy is that on some level he feels bad about, you know, just continually bringing into existence new mothers. And, I mean, he really screws them over. Does that make him a mother? Yeah. 
and you know we see she's still renovating and you know there's you, you, yeah you see the the wall and she imagines this beating heart and the yeah you know she's hallucinating off of just minutes in like in black swan And that's some really loud running water. And the, you know, you have the micro aggression with, you know, yeah, I'll grab it. No, I'll grab it. And, you know, you have odd Ed with, you know, oh, come in, sit down. It's like, <laughs> dude, you just at least ask her first and try to find out who he is. And, the, yeah. And, and, you know, they have your wife. I thought she was your daughter. And, yeah. And noting the age difference between Jennifer Lawrence and Aronofsky, if they were to appear in a movie together, you could, yeah, they could pass as father and daughter. And you know she gets a bit of a tummy ache once you know after Ed comes in. The bit where like Ed is missing like part of like his back there, was that his rib? I guess maybe he's supposed to be like Adam, which would make Michelle Pfeiffer Eve. And there's definitely there's some lust between them what what would be the apple in the scenario All right, maybe I'll think realize it later and you know he thought we were a and b and they you know they keep ignoring right from right away you know him is doing Bardem is doing it and the guests, even the first two, just ignore Lawrence's wishes and like, you know, we don't smoke. That's a good choice, you know. However, as a doctor, I can personally recommend, you know, but yeah, no, we don't smoke in the house. <laughs> Dude, take a hint. And, you know, you see the, the basement, the, the basement wall shaking. And the, the furnace looks really threatening, which I guess is basically mainly set up for the later, yeah, burning. And I, I'm not sure if, I, I mean, I guess maybe it's intentional. It's not really clear if the hallucinations, you know, happened before Ed. And so I'm, I'm, wait. No, I guess the, well, only the heart. The heart was the only hallucination she had before he was there. And that's, yeah, I don't know. We learned that Ed's a fan of Bardem. And the, you know, the, the very delicate rock. I told you, do not enter the West Wing. That's a terrible beast voice. I apologize. And you have the ashes. Oh, you're not just a pretty face, but you're just an a-hole. And a hundred percent, yeah. And, you know, Jennifer keeps waking up in bed with Bardem not there, and she walks the house to, to find. But really, you know, in general, she is alone and she wanders the house to try to find again maybe maybe at some later date I'll, I'll really be able to understand that I I mean I get them not respecting her wishes if she's like mother nature yeah you know that yeah human beings in general abuse nature and but but leaving alone I don't quite yeah and, you know, we see that he, you know, they've, at least one, you know, has been smoking a lot and left a lot of butt, butts in the, the, you know, and it's like, you didn't even smoke, could, could you not just stick to just take one smoke and smoke it 
done. They, you know, all these, yeah. And yeah, you know, like Rosemary's Baby, the, you know, they they're rude, they're pushy, and they force themselves into their lives and their home. Excuse me. And you know, she to to deal with like the pain, she pours some yellow powder into a glass and and drinks it. You know, this is not a drill. Was that too vague? And. What on earth does that mean? Oh, right. The, the you know, yeah. This is going to be a little crass, but yeah, you know, Jennifer's standing with the, you know, and her. She might be excited, or maybe it's just cold, or you know, in this particular scene, Jennifer Lawrence. Is played by Rose McGowan. And, you know, the, I love your work. And then we have another jump scare. And a lots of cigarettes. Yeah, you know, and it. Oh, sorry. Lighting. She lights the. He lights the cigarette, I think it is. On the stove, you know. Do you think you are? Homer Simpson on the 4th of July? And they just keep making out in front of, you know, J Law and Bardem. It's it's really legitimately uncomfortable. And you know the burnt breakfast, and it's like, <laughs> did it, was it really? Not, you know, if Michelle Pfeiffer had just not learned, you know, just and and she goes ahead and drops it and. Both of them burn their hands on it, and I don't know. I mean, wouldn't that was she using grease to to make it? Because I don't quite understand how they burned their hand, but you know, dream logic, yeah. And you know, and and I think it's Michelle said, you know, oh, you're both so different. Just wow, you are. Way too honest, and you know she says, "Ah," oh, and then the kids came and screwed, you know, screwed it up, and yeah, that's <laughs> thanks, mom. And the you know, yeah, that's I mean, the kids are obviously Cain and Abel, and I mean, yeah, because when Cain murders Abel, he screws things up. It would have been fine if you know it would have been better if he hadn't, yeah, and the you know. Oh, the kids! Oh, they have this. They have your eyes. You know, cute Rosemary's baby. You know, it, it wouldn't really have made sense for the ending to have. Oh, what's wrong with his eyes? Oh, we have his father's eyes. You know, that wouldn't have worked out. But so instead, they put it here. You know, very, very cute. And yeah, you know, it's like oh, maybe, you know, maybe something to eat. And this. Oh, we couldn't. We couldn't possibly impose, which is like the neighbors and Rosemary's baby. And, and you know, oh, what about your writings? I was trying not to think about it, you know. The, the, it's right under the, the surface. Oh, I should get back to work. And, and again, she tries to initiate intimacy. She tries to apologize, and he doesn't accept it. For almost the entire movie, he, he treats her, very, he's very distant with her, and yeah, maybe it is because on some level he feels bad or he doesn't really think much of her because she's, you know, he keeps ending up in this situation. If he was forceful in keeping the guests out, things wouldn't have gone as bad as they did. And we realize it's happened tons of times before. So he, he clearly doesn't care enough about her. To him, she's disposable which is of course a really good you know allegory to the way a lot of men view women you know I'll, I can always get someone else and yeah so he doesn't really care about what happens to her and then you know it's a family recipe what the lemons you know sometimes she does 
respond a little with the... I mean, on some level, it's lemonade, lady. It's not... Yeah. Just, and... You know, it's... Jennifer, just be grateful that she's not bringing turnip juice. You know, I, I want to make it a paradise. You know, very, yeah, cute. And, you know, thank you for your hospitality. Your husband's a genius. Or generous. Yeah. Well, they also call him a genius. And, and you know, she, yeah, Michelle points out, wouldn't it be easier to build another home or build another house? And really, at the time, we're like, screw you. They can, first off, they get to decide what to do about their burned down house. Second, if it's important to them, it's important to them. You know, yeah, but by the end, we really understand, you know, oh, it's, it's home because she rebuilt it, you know, with her passion, with her heart. And, yeah, you know, at, at first you're saying, it's her home, you know, but but then by the end, no, it's it's her home. It's literally, that's her heart in there, slowly, you know, beating less and less. And, you know, and, and it's also allegorical for, you know, you know, Earth, our home, and yeah, it's you know, with, with people like, ugh, it's it's such a hassle to stop abusing Earth. You know, can't we just you know, yeah, and yeah, I know I sound like a complete hippie. I can live with that. And I already mentioned that. What on earth does that mean? Yeah, I guess it's it's that thing, you know, she talks about you want why don't you want children? Oh, you do want children. And oh, you have relationship issues. I forget the exact line, but that and then I guess, oh, I think we found the answer. Would you? Wow. Pushy. You're going to have to try harder. Oh, is the problem with him? And, oh, I'm sure he still loves you. What a messed up thing to say. She never said that she didn't think he still loved her. And again, so pushy. Even if that's something that she does think and bothers her to think about, you have no right to talk to her about it. Not unless she brings it up. And she didn't. And... I... I... I guess one part where I could kind of see it being like a dark comedy. Jennifer keeps like throwing their stuff, you know, she takes the, the little lighter and throws it behind and she throws the, the yeah, like, you know, throwing behind the, the counter behind the washing machine and yeah. You know, just slight, you know, passive aggressive action, to, you know, I mean, these are not like, it's not like she does that to the, the heart of the house or anything, you know, so. And then, you know, again, we have the setup of the lighter, and it's still there later. Which, really, considering, excuse me, all the house has been through, and all the unreal, surreal, excuse me, stuff that's happened along the way, it's pretty incredible that that's still there, but, yeah. And, yeah, right, right, you know, she keeps waking up alone in the house. And the plunger, but the, there's a live crab down there. I think it was a crab. And it's like, yeah, that's, wow. And that's probably a reference to Bible I also don't really remember the, the frog thing. It, it's probably some Bible thing, the, the frog. But I don't, yeah. And... 
yeah, you know, she finds in their luggage picture of him, and we keep seeing, you know, then it's torn apart, and then there's one that's whole again later. The, the, you know, there's definitely, they, they, you know, he's a poet, but they treat him like a prophet. They act like he's Jesus. You know, and then, you know, oh, he touched my face. Oh, that's amazing. You know, he puts the paint on face. And then later, it's the, you know, Z Zealot? Is that his? Nah, I think it's some other. But, but yeah, you know, the, the old guy, you know, then he, no, no, it's okay. Through me, you can get his greatness. And, I, you know, yeah. And more of Ed Coffin. And, you know, this, oh, he's dying and he wanted to meet Javier before that happened. And... And, yeah, it's like, you know, if that's the case, then why didn't he just... You know, when he said, oh, I thought this was a bed and breakfast, why didn't he just come out and say, even if he, you know, he could still claim, I thought it was a bed and breakfast, but at least just, yeah, openly say, I am dying and I wanted to meet you before that happened. Whoops. And, and you know, the, the, I think, yeah, yeah, this is when they break the heart. And it's, and it is also like, what were you, she just told you he doesn't want anyone in there without him. And you're touching the thing that you knew was incredibly important to him. But, yeah, you know. I mean, he even told, you know, oh, I want to tell her the story. Then ask Javier to, to just literally, they know. Ed knew this is the most important thing, you know. This was the only thing that was like, you know. And they're like, oh, we'll pay for a new one. Yeah, that's, wow. And, you know, yeah, he yells, quiet, and get out. And, you know, his hands are all bloody as he crushes it between, yeah. And, you know, him speaking very intensely to her. And then, you know, legitimately, Michelle Pfeiffer is like having sex, you know, get, not quite yet having sex, but getting ready to have sex, you know. They, you just destroyed this thing, and you're told, you know, get out, and, yeah. And, you know, you have the demon eyes, and I don't know what that means. Oh, right, yeah, I might as well say that, you know, definitely a movie to watch on the big screen. And, you know, f handle flies off. And he hammers the, you know, in front of the office. And I think, yeah, John Florence looks out, and, you know, and so where, where did they go? And, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer is, you know, in a bra and is like, you know, crap, I forget the exact line, but yeah, it was something like, we or you? Yeah, I think it was like, we want you out of here. We or you? And, you know, again, you know, people being told stop abusing Earth and, yeah, just saying, oh, what? It's, you know, yeah, not respecting that. And, and like, you know, the brother's going, who are you? I live here, you know, everyone is acting like, I get, is that like immigration kind of thing with like, I mean, maybe like the, the American, like, yeah, they, the, you know, the settlers go to America and like, who are these people? This is our land. And, you know, who are you, what are you doing here? And, you know, yeah, you have the Cain and Abel, which plays out like, I mean, I, I maybe maybe Aronofsky was like, people are going to realize right away. Because they, you know, they bust in, they're talking about the inheritance, and one of them is like really jealous of his brother, so he's like, people are going to realize this is Cain and Abel, so I might as well, you know, if I don't do it extremely quickly, people are just going to get impatient for me to go through with the Cain and Abel thing. And... 
you know, and, and Cain says, you know, they hate me. Who is, who is they? The, I mean, I guess if he owns like a company, maybe there's a board of directors and the, the trust thing, but yeah. And, you know, it gets into a physical fight over, you know, inheritance. And one of the sons feels like the father left him nothing. And, you know, oh, we, we have to take him, you know, let's see. You know, oh, I'll get some towels because towels resurrect people. You know, and don't leave me alone in the house, and yeah. And you know, finally we get an establishing shot of the house. Other reviewers have pointed out it's it's such a relief to get, but by then it's too late for that relief. Which again, I'm not saying is a bad thing. And you know, we see the house of the heart, heart of the house weakening, and you know, the blood stain which just won't clean. And you know, suddenly it's like acid going through the, the floor, like you know, alien, the original movie. And you know, the, the brother comes back, they left you alone. You do understand. Good luck. And you know, and and then he's like, Oh, I need a hot shower. You know, will you come? If you rub her right, she will. And yeah, this is the first time that he seems to desire intimacy with her. He's even initiating. And then, you know, he's fallen asleep. And yeah, obviously make a joke about the guy falling asleep before she's done. And, you know, this is not even right after sex, but before it. And, you know, and, and they're like, oh, they had nowhere to go. So they invited their friends and family. Oh, I'll go deal with them. And, yeah. And, and like, you know, this poet, I mean, they never, I don't think they said that he was like an, a poet that makes you happy or feel nice things. But, yeah, he's like, you know, it seems like there's nothing to love. It's just a vast silence and darkness. I really don't think this is necessarily what they need to hear right now. And, you know, and they start crying. That's the worst poetry I've ever heard. I mean, let's, let's be clear. We're, we're decrying the violence on both sides here. Many sides. And, you know, the, the people that say, you know, they're just walking in. They don't even, and like, you know, some of them are bringing food and some of them like giving you know, very familiar, like, kisses, you know, not on, not on the lips, you know, I mean, they're not Natalie Dormer, so, yeah, the, and, and one of them goes up and, like, hugs her, and, you know, it. I, I don't know if that's, like, a thing on the Bible, you know, people beget more people, or, yeah. And, you know, she said, you give and you give and you give, and it's never enough. And that's, you know, again, good metaphor for women, for Earth. And and suddenly they're painting her house, and they're like, no, no, no it's okay, I, I know how to do this. Nobody asked you to do it. Nobody said it was okay for you to, yeah. And, and I guess, again, you know, if you want to say the, the house and her are like Earth, they're just like, no, no, it's okay, I know how to do this, as they abuse Earth, as they change it, and, yeah. And now, you know, it's really, oh, we're here for him. And they, you know, oh, you know, they, they spill the things, like, and one of them throws this disgusting, filthy rag, like, do you really think I want that on my, on my table? Do you really think that's going to make it cleaner? And... You know, and, and then there's that guy just constantly trying to pick up Jennifer. And when she keeps shooting him down, and she's like, she's clear. Like, she never does anything to lead him on. And finally he just gives up. And he doesn't just, like, he, he doesn't go, well, you know, gracefully. No, he just, 
yeah, calls her a C word and just which yeah, I mean that's that's how attractive women are treated in you know at parties and such. And the and the sink, I really I thought this was so beautiful. You know, people keep no look, that sink has not been some like braced or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what it means. I just forget the words, but yeah, and, and they keep sitting there every time she turns over, you know, and the, yeah, point out in the midnight screen she was, she, she turns her head and something crazy new is going on. And they're like, no, no, it's okay, look, it's and they start bouncing on it like, like spoiled children that have been told not to do a thing. And it breaks, and the pipes, and, you know, and she's like, get out! And, you know, no, no, we can fix it. Just, or was it, I, I can fix it, but yeah. And you know, and and yeah, she directly tells him, you know, nothing works, nothing helps you. You know, the the writing, yeah, you know, all this renovating, and it didn't help. And and you know, they have their big shouty verbal fight airing out their their issues and, and she's like you won't even f me and then and then he tries to rape her and then she does get back into it and says i i don't know what that's supposed to, i i don't think that's like saying that women deep down that when a man tries to rape a woman that deep down she did something to cause it but i i don't know i mean maybe maybe aronofsky is saying that in the bible there's a lot of rape and it did lead to, you know, children. So, you know, and there's that one pastor said, that's a miracle from God. And, you know, she wakes up praying and she's certain she's praying. I'm like, you know, Alfred Molina and species might have, uh, you know, might argue with you on your certainty of that. But, and then he starts writing. He doesn't even put on pants. Oh, it's from their pain and their love of us. And yeah. And and you know she pours out the powder and her walk is no longer robotic, and we have the the fade with the belly and we have the it, her big belly in the nursery, you see, which is also like the first time you see it, it's like oh man that's so nice, and then later you see them like taking stuff out and it's really horrifying you know and and he's sitting there writing he's using a quilt pen I don't know if you know this but there are better things to use to write and I don't know it's probably again like allegory for something and you see the bulging belly is like oh he moved <laughs> I guess if yeah technically it's it's movement and Will I lose you? Never. And, you know, the, yeah, the guests ignore the warnings and the break things. A lot of times they don't even apologize for it. And they, they keep saying, no, no, it's okay, which is, yeah, that's what people who abuse are, you know, they don't necessarily literally use those words, but they always, they communicate, sometimes via their actions, I don't, t I'm not taking the warning seriously. And, you know, suddenly there's a lot of people, you know, now, you know, a lot of them are outside. And, you know, yeah, too many people who don't, you know, and they don't respect the needs of the mother, needs of mother nature, needs of a woman. And... You know the the blood through the rug, and you know sometimes it's not. There's this one time where oh, there's not even the blood under the the rug, but then there's that other time where it does, and yeah. And close-ups of Jennifer. The, one one reviewer said that you know the camera caresses every part of Jennifer Lawrence, and by the end of the movie, you've seen every inch of her, and 
yeah, I'd have to agree. I, I don't know if Aronofsky decided that before or after. You know, I mean, apparently Jennifer Lawrence and he started dating during making the movie. So, yeah. I personally thought the cinematography was great. There's no shot in this that I would have changed. And the, you know, there's kind of this, like, idea that, of, of fans, that the artist owes them something, something of, you know, they should have something that the artist holds dear. And some people have said, oh, look how little Aronofsky thinks of his fans. I don't think it's that. I don't think he's saying that's what... I mean, there's almost nothing in the film that I think you should take literally. It's, it's allegory. And he's saying that sometimes fans are demanding of artists. And I'm sorry, that's just plain true. Maybe these people are just feeling a little like... <laughs> Like they're they're like this is about me, isn't it? No, no, it's about no, it's about me because they deep down feel like it maybe is, and uh, yeah, these people in the movie are literally stealing. And I already said that. And yeah, you know, once they start training on like a prophet, there's ritual. You know, they're not. I mean, when people meet their fans, you know, oh, they, you know, when when someone famous meet their the fans, oh, can I can I get an autograph? Can I take a selfie with you? So, but in this, they like, please paint my my, you know, like forehead or or you know, to ten, you know, whatever. I think you know what I mean. Yeah, and they're breaking all this stuff to break something off to take, and I guess it's like you know, golden calf kind of thing, worshiping the wrong thing, you know. And and it's it's very quickly organized. Like the the you know it doesn't take long for the yeah the the old guy to take over the ritual, and they're all standing in line to get there. And yeah, really the yeah if if you try to take the movie at all like it's set in the real world, it just it makes no sense. But yeah, it is this like. Yeah. Now. And suddenly it's a dance club, you know. I, I, I love Aronofsky. And let's see, there is. Let's see. Yeah, you know, the, the. Yeah, you know, they tear off some panel and then they steal the crib. That really got to me. And, and they say, you know, oh, we need proof that we were here. And maybe is that like hunters and, and like, you know, saying, oh, I, if I kill something, then it's, you know, I'm in touch with nature or something. You know, you have to break something or steal something. So, and, you know, yeah, she, you know, she screams and they're breaking in. You know, so, and then these brutal cops who mace her and him and... You know, he's, he fights the cop, and just, yeah. And, you know, yeah, they're like, they're riot cops. And suddenly you have these executions with a pistol in each hand. And she's like, oh, there you are. You know, it's just, she's not, just, yeah. And there's this kind of jail, and yeah. And then you have the, the SWAT team, and finally someone who's like, you, you need help. There's a, you know, medic. You know, at some point, you know, there are dozens of people, maybe a hundred people over the course of the film. At some point, at least one person was bound to, like, be, oh, you actually need help. And I appreciate there's so much variety to the mayhem. And, you know, the birth is very brief, as, you know, like in Noah. Does Aronofsky understand how, you know, childbirth is not, like... It's not like a, a, a microwave cooking kind of thing. It it kind of it takes a while, and I I don't know that from personal experience. The only birth I was present at was my own. I you know, kind of had to be there. And you have you know these these white flashes, and they're giving gifts to you know, and. Let's see, and you know it's a boy, and 
And it was around this time where I was like, you know, there's been really disturbing material. There hasn't really been anything grotesque yet, which there is in every single other Aronofsky film. And, you know, and yeah, not very long after I got, you know, and she's like, make them go away. And he's, you know, he's sitting there, you know, and as they point on the midnight screen, he's literally waiting for her to fall asleep so he can say, you know. And there's this, you know, point made that an artist needs an audience. He doesn't want to get them to go. And, and it's also suddenly they're they're calm and he's like, he can open the door and, oh, my, there are gifts here. And they're not breaking in like the zombie horde that they were behaving like before. I don't want them to go. Let me hold the baby. And it's like, oh, I'll do it. She's about to feed him. Dude, this is really not your... And it is like every step of the way, he's like, no, this is this is for me. I am, you know. And they, you know, I read on a yes, trivia or maybe trivia or maybe Wikipedia or something, but, you know, pointed out, you know, near the end, you know, he, him says, I am I, which, yeah, that's a reference to God. That's something God said in the Bible. So... Yeah, it's part of the way, I guess it is, like, he wants what he wants, he hates women, and he he wants to be worshipped, and yeah. And, and like, you know, the, the baby boy is like, Mom, Dad, stop fighting, I love you both. Why don't you both shut up? And it is like, for, for just for a fraction of a second, you know, the baby's like looking up at her, and for, for just a few, just a second or two, it like stops me and it closes his mouth and the eyes. And I was like, please don't let it become a demon. Please don't let it become a demon. I was really relieved that that wasn't, yeah. And... And yeah, you know, she wakes up and yeah, he's like presenting the baby to the guests and you know the crowd are you know suddenly the the kid is crowd surfing you know more butt support more butt support and they snap its neck and there you have the grotesque man that really yeah that was that's Aronofsky and suddenly you know and and she walks up and you know and it's like minced meat and suddenly they're cannibals and you know obviously it's the Jesus thing it's just made literal you know they're eating his flesh and drinking his blood but Man, that's horrifying, and, you know, within, like, in less than a minute, she goes from being Mary, you know, Jesus' mother, to Mary Magdalene. They're, like, stoning her, you know, and, and you know, he who is kin to Jesus trying to stop them from stoning her. You know, you have Todd Flanders throwing the first stone, got the... That individual from Life of Brian selling rocks, you know, a rock star. And and you know, I guess it's supposed to be like nature gave humanity you know, Jesus and man killed Jesus and you know, which again is like, you know, the the in Rosemary's baby, it's the devil spawn, this is not a spoiler, because you it one of the first things that happens is the, the devil rape thing. And yeah, I mean they so you maybe kind of expected, oh, this will be a devil spawn. Nope, it was Jesus. So they kinda of did the reverse of that South Park episode thing. And you know, and, and here at the end is where there's a lot of physical torture of Jennifer Lawrence. Before that, it's mostly the, the emotional and psychological torture. And, you know, you have the furnace, you have the gas, and, you know, the, the you never loved me and how, you know, you, you just loved how I loved you. Which is also true of a lot of, you know, a lot of women end up realizing that about the, the man they're with. And, yeah, we see 
you know, at first I was just like, oh, it's the opening coming through, but we then realized, no, it's it's the, the opening already had to come true, it's that, you know, it's repeating itself, and yeah, you have, you know, is it is it the end of days, is it nuclear, the holocaust, is it, you know, Earth being destroyed by the, the you know, by climate change, yeah. And you have the IMI, and And the, you know, where you take me to the beginning, and yeah. And the, I, th I think, you know, the, not too long ago, they put up like one of Aronofsky's statements on the IMDb trivia. Definitely read that. I, yeah, I'm not gonna go over, but just, you know, he talks about how crazy the modern world is and how everything is in our house excuse me, via our cell phone and such, and yeah, you know, just, here is made literal, and, you know, they, you know, they talk about, we don't want people calling us all the time, but that, which I guess is like, even if you try to push away the, the horror of reality, you can't, which is Aronofsky's pessimism there, you know, I, you can kind of understand how he's pessimistic. It, it would make a lot of sense if he only recently turned pessimistic, because really, it's a special. It's it's. I'm not sure exactly when, but it is a very recent phenomenon. Actually, maybe it is since like around 2000 that we really start realizing just how many bad things there are around the world. And I mean, on some level, do we really need to know all these things? A lot of them we can't do anything about, but. You know, if it bleeds, it leads. So yeah, and you know, he takes Jennifer Sargent, and she yeah, and he's like, you know, go ahead, take it, and yeah, and you know, she becomes Ash, and the you know, the the heart turns out to be that that rock diamond. You know, he performs open heart surgery. Starts talking about how the Pyramids were actually silos for was a grain, I think. And yeah, it starts over. Earth is reborn after we break it, and you know, it it appears different, but it's really the same overall. You know, which yeah, I mean, and that's you know the thing. Oh, we can't possibly destroy the world. No, we can make it uninhabitable to human beings. You know, the, the I, I there's this one more on conservative that was like, ah, the the you know, the the dinosaurs, the world was completely different back then and still survived. Yeah, but the dinosaurs didn't Nimrod. And that's yeah, I'm I'm gonna see what I have in the excuse me. In the rail, in the notes I took before watching. Now, and that means on plot. You know, from the Bible to the popular song, there's one theme that we find right along of all ideals they hail as good, the most sublime is motherhood. There was a man, though, who it seems once carried this ideal to extremes. And, you know, this was these were the first notes I took, and for obvious reasons, I saved them for this the spoiler part of the video. I don't know if there's a problem with this, but from the teaser, it just came, it seemed kind of straightforward for an Aronofsky film. A dude comes to a couple's house expecting it to be a bed and breakfast. Supernatural stuff starts happening. You know, I was wondering where would his unique touch be, and, you know, yeah. And I have to say, yeah, it was very much there, and I'm really glad they didn't give away more in the in the trailers. But, yeah, you know, if you might just think it's, it's Rosemary's Baby, but... Um, yeah, 
And, you know, Film Brand said it's bad to be down on Bourne. If there's one thing modern filmmakers like to do in their horror movies, it's rip off the ending to Rosemary's Baby. And, yeah, from the first, again, not the teaser, but from the real trailer, I got a real Rosemary's, ba Rosemary's Baby vibe. You know, a couple of them live close to the family and, in fact, force their way into the family's lives. Artist's husband knows they're using the wife for some evil ritual in their own home. And, yeah, I was wondering, is this actually just a redo of Rosemary's Baby, which I can live with on a grander scale. It looks like, you know, more people in the cover, at least more seen, more taking a very active role, seen and doing so, which that didn't, it, you know, really turn out to be the case. But, you know, we do, there are a lot more seen characters than, you know, though a lot of them don't have names or lines, than in Rosemary's Baby. But, you know, and it being in the middle of nowhere, might be because today we wouldn't believe the Rosemary character accepting not talking to others. You know, gender norms have changed that much. Back then it was completely credible. And Rosemary's Baby takes the time, takes the time, simmers and shows a gradual worsening of Rosemary's condition over the course of the pregnancy. You know, I love how she's like, you know, the, the friend sees her for the first time in a while and he's like, what has happened to you? And she's like, don't you like the hair? She doesn't even think, she's she's gotten used to the fact that she looks so pale so she's almost like what didn't you hear this is how pregnant women are supposed to look but yeah you know it, it hints it's not very overt about the cult the scares are subtle not big but incredibly effective psychological horror even though it's about the devil's spawn one of the most terrifying things about it i find is that by the end of it feels completely isolated and alone no one fights for her no one believes her outside of the people who know exactly what's going on and aggressive fight to make sure it continues even trained professionals betray her confidence we do find out what's been happening in great detail but it doesn't show a lot of horrifying sights and it came out the same year as night of the living dead which has a lot of blood and violence it's not like no movies around that time Rural. We don't even see the baby. Maybe they wouldn't have back then, but Snyder's Dawn that it certainly showed the monster baby. But in Rosemary, we see the her reaction, and our imagination fills it in. You know, again, I'm not saying that they should have shown the baby. You know, the line "Shut up or we'll kill you, milk or no milk" is just just really stunning to me. You know, to her, Rosemary's reaction is merely incredibly annoying. And in an earlier midnight screening. Maybe it was Sarah or something said, you know, it's about a sex cult, right? Which didn't quite turn out to be the case. And characters. This is the first Aronofsky directed film not to have Mark Margolis, even in a cameo. You know, IMDb doesn't list him as being in it with, you know, even Michael Caine's cameo in Dunkirk is on IMDb. I feel like Margolis would have fit in. I, I wouldn't have given. I, I don't think he should have had the role that the. the I, I forget if maybe Zealot is the credited name, but you know, and the old guy who leads the rituals. But I do definitely think he could have been in. You know, you should always be careful if an Ed Harris character appears in your life and seems to know things about you. You know, just watch the Truman Show, Animated the Gates, Beautiful Mind, History of Violence, or it appears some of the ones with him that I haven't watched. You know what Benjamin Franklin said about house guests: "Like fish, after a few days, they're cutting your heart out." And I think that will be. What I go into, man, that's a lot of reviews. I still have that. Yeah, that's that's. I really love this movie, and I hope you did too. And if you watched to this part of the video, you were warned that you should probably have watched the movie first, or else I definitely spoiled a lot of it for you. And. Yeah, Aronofsky, please don't stop making movies until you are old and gray. You just... I never know quite what to expect from your movies, but... Yeah, just amazing. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.